What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? Today we have a viewer comment. You can't weld. Ah, I don't need that negativity in my life. So we have a viewer question dealing with welding in gases or cleaners or anything to do with welding over this stuff. So let's get into it. In front of us here, I have a bunch of what appears to be random cans of junk, and these really aren't random, and they're intimately intertwined with welding, and let me explain. If you weld for a living or repair stuff, it's going to be pretty common to weld over paint. It's just a part of life. You know, nobody has all the time in the day to properly prep everything you could possibly repair, and thanks to stick welding or flux core welding, you can often weld over rust and paint, and it poses a interesting health hazard dealing with the fume, the smoke, and damage to your lungs. Same thing like with brake parts cleaner, which it's pretty common to need to clean and rub, say, sticker residue or some kind of contaminant on something before you weld it that you might have brake cleaner and you might use it. And that's extremely dangerous. Just like this electrical parts cleaner, uh, welding over this can be dangerous as well. And if you're in the repair industry, it's going to be very common to weld over something that's greasy or has oil. And that poses its own unique health hazard as well. So even though all of these are completely different, some are solvents, some are greases, you get the picture paint, they all can become toxic gas that can kill your lungs or your brain cells. And don't get me wrong, I don't have that many brain cells that are functional left, but I don't want to exacerbate the problem by welding on chlorinated brake cleaner. So that's the first thing we're going to talk about. It's very common in your home shop to have chlorinated brake cleaner or any kind of parts brake cleaner. Now you see this says non-chlorinated. The problem with chlorinated brake cleaner is the chlorine basically becomes phosgene gas in the high temperature of an electric arc and it will literally turn you into a vegetable. And I don't mean to joke about it, but literally it is that dangerous. So my recommendation, if you have any red can brake cleaner or anything that says chlorinated on the can somewhere, throw it out because the off chance that you or someone else might clean something with it and then weld on it and turn yourself into basically the walking dead isn't worth it. So get rid of that junk. And my opinion is don't use even non-chlorinated brake cleaner either. That's my thought on it. Now, it's very common to have electric parts cleaner or some other kind of solvent or cleaner. And unless you read the label and know what's in it, you can wind up with chlorinated solvents and something like this. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to read this really quick. And sure enough, it has a form of tetrachloroethylene, which I would assume would be referring to having some kind of a chlorine atom in this. And when I use this to clean something, my God, the chlorine stench off of it, terrible. You go and weld on stuff like this, and you, again, you're going to turn yourself into a vegetable. With grease like this, too, you don't want to weld on something coated with this or oil and just sit there and breathe the fumes like you're a hero. If you have to weld on something that's coated with grease or oil, my recommendation, use a fan to blow the stuff out of the area or use a cartridge filter mask or use a powered air purifying respirator. You have to do something. Your lungs are not designed to filter these contaminants once they become aerosolized and heated up and vaporized. They're, your lungs do not take kindly to this kind of stuff and it will at a minimum damage your lungs over time and even possibly, like I said, your brain can be affected by this stuff. Likewise, this is probably the most common contaminant that people weld on is just simple paint. Now this doesn't really give a good list of what's all in here and a lot of it is simply the solvent that's in here that allows it to be sprayed which will evaporate over time as it cures but you don't want to be breathing on this either. So the best advice that I can give you and to answer the viewers question regarding this stuff is if you need to clean something, use straight acetone with a rag and wipe it down. Do not start screwing around with anything in a can, no matter how good it works. 
If you were an idiot and used chlorinated brake cleaner, you better let that stuff flash off for a while and scrub it down with acetone or soapy water or something. It's hard to go wrong with soapy water on something that's really greasy to cut the grease off and then wipe it down with acetone when you're done. That would be my recommendation. It's not worth the potential health risks of using cleaners that when they become vaporized in the arc could potentially kill you. Same thing like I said, man, not to beat a dead horse, clean the grease up the best you can. And you know what, you probably should be wearing a, a respirator of some sort anyways to keep some of this particulate out of your lungs. But you gotta remember, not all respirators can protect you against things like paint and grease fume. So you wanna be careful with that. And I wish that there was some 100%, you know, it's gonna be safe, but welding in general isn't the safest hobby or career path to be honest. So you're better off just taking extra precautions and just being simple about it. Acetone or soapy water in a rag, that's your best bet. Use that and it doesn't hurt to use a wire wheel on a grinder to clean a lot of the stuff off as well, like paint. If you can do that, do it. It's not worth breathing the fumes, honestly. So with that said, thanks for sticking around. Until next time.